I love Cyclopes in D&D because all the book does is shit on them as hard as possible. Yeah, the plural of Cyclops is Cyclopes, I know it sounds stupid. The book describes them as simple, brutish farm folk who have cute little farms, small communities where they travel across hills to trade with friends, and keep big rocks in front of their homes or caves to protect themselves from outsiders. That's really sweet and wholesome. Let's see some of their entry subtitles. Non-religious. Unsophisticated. Unwise. Smells like ass. No dick. No balls. Lily livered yellow belly son of a one-eyed prairie dog. They're sort of like natives in untouched island communities, where they get by entirely well on their own, by their own standards and modest cultures. But if you showed them a TikTok like this, Their one giant eye would roll back into their head and they'd start screaming in terror, calling you a god or a devil and throwing enormous boulders at you. But there's this one episode in Adventure Time. I want to test my knowledge. I think it's the Goblin King Season 2 Episode 8. <coughs> Shit, okay, I was close. But it really got me thinking about the fantastic little prospect of making medium-level villains who use Cyclopes like a small army of overpowered savages. Or honestly, even a party of supposedly well-meaning adventurers who have an immediate problem that they need solved. If you watched The Road to El Dorado, spent some time during your childhood in a cult, or are Jared Leto, you know everyone who's got a little bit too much ego in their ego would totally try to take advantage of Cyclopes and their ironically short-sighted way of life. In the Odyssey, Odysseus walks into the cave of a Cyclops to steal his livestock, and then the Cyclops locks them in with a huge boulder and is the only guy strong enough to move it out of the way, which is super inspiring for giving physical problems narrative solutions. And then they get the giant drunk, stab his eye out with a baked log, and ride his sheep to freedom. These one-eyed giants are weirdly friendly, but also dangerous, like they aren't in control of their strength or rage. But the best thing about Cyclopean tubes is that they are super gullible. Since they live isolated lives, they don't know too much about magic. So if you approach one, cast a cantrip to play fart.wav at volume 12 and then turn an egg into a chicken, they'll believe that you have the powers of God itself. And with this level 1 magic, you can convince and control a challenge rating 6 goon. And if you can go find some neighbors, puff out your chest, and tell them that you'll smite them all down if they don't obey, bam! That's an early game army that you can easily take over a village with. Which is what Zergiok tried to do. But as with any Clopian giant, be them ear clops, mouth clops, nose pass, or giant ass faces, their simplified senses are their downfall. If you can blind one or several of them, or otherwise censor their senses, the battle's supposed to become drastically easier, even if it just means you run away. Or you walk them off a cliff face or something. But they're simple creatures that have a very thematic solution. No one uses ear clopses in a battle without earplugs. My other favorite thing about using them is the fact that, since you can easily trick them into servitude, if you get the chance, you can just as easily talk them into rebellion. Or better yet, if an army is marching on a small town, you could convince them to stand as overwhelmingly powerful guardians. Instead of the morally fun way where you lie to them, you can offer trade. Cyclopes like pets and animals that they can keep, breed, and eat. And also people to eat no. and maybe breed. I don't know what they have going on in there. But they're also really big fans of shiny things, like giant muscular crows. It's sort of funny, the book says that they don't use money, they use gold. I think, since they prefer isolation and it adheres to their little lore, Cyclops Islands absolutely bump. But if you want to use them anywhere in your story, you can put them in abandoned mountain passes, or places that villages are extending to, or as pests contesting territory with settlers. It all makes Cyclopes work pretty dang well in campaigns and stories. And even though they don't know magic and stuff, some of them temporarily get blessed by gods or warlock patrons on the off chance that a club-wielding one-eyed drunken oaf can throw stuff in a way that serves the gods' motives. Because these big oafs don't really care to worship anything at all. That's basically Cyclopeus. Cyclopses. That feels better to say.